Hi, hello, hi everybody, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to Venture Capital TV from La Token. My name is Sunny Mohanty. I'm the regional director of La Token and also the host of BCTV. And I'm very excited and happy to have you all back on BCTV. We're today going to discuss about cryptocurrencies and investment interest, investors interest, especially from the institutional players. Why? Why are they interested to invest into crypto suddenly uh, after um, Tesla's investments? I mean, you've seen so many, so many institutional players coming into crypto. So we're going to know what is driving that interest uh, into crypto investments. So yes, today I'm uh, joined by um, speakers who are deeply involved some of them are deeply involved in, in, in crypto business, and they have also um, invested recently into non-crypto companies, which, which means they're bringing traditional companies into crypto as well. So that's very interesting. Uh, we have a use case as well to discuss today. So again, welcome, welcome back. Welcome back, Patrick, Adrian, Gary. Um, happy to see you back on this episode of VCTV. Uh, so let's take a quick round of intro before we deep dive into what is driving that interest from institutional investors to invest in crypto and Bitcoin. I'm going to start with Patrick. Patrick, hi, Patrick. How are you? Hello, I'm great. Okay. So, uh, so yeah, I'm uh, Patrick Poirier and I'm a general partner at Dragon's Bolt. So we're sort of an investment fund that uh, invests in small and medium-sized business. But we have a different investment model where we created our own uh, token as well. That is a crypto NWT, Cryptium. And that's what we use as the core investment. When we make an investment into a business, we convert part of their cash flow to Cryptium. So this way we can make uh, a return for our LP from the token itself, not just from the equity. So it's uh, highly liquid and much better than the typical 20 to 40% return a year. So it's a, it's a really different investment model. Yeah, and we're gonna discuss about your uh, recent uh, uh, sort of investment as well. Uh, you've just moved to Singapore from Canada, correct? That's right, I've been here just one month now. And what made you to move to Singapore from Canada? Just just for, for my uh, understanding. It's saying that the crypto regulation is a lot better than Canada and the US. Uh, the right. weather is better. Uh, it's kind of impartial with, uh, you know, like with the rest of China and the rest of Asia. So it's right. kind of it's a good middle ground uh, to be on both sides of the fence, I would say. Perfect. And welcome to Singapore, uh, uh, Patrick. And I'm going to discuss your experience in one month in Singapore. Thank you. Uh, next up, Adrian. Hi, Adrian. Welcome back. Thanks for joining today. <laughs> Hello, Sonny. Thank you. Uh, Patrick should mention that maybe the women in Singapore are, are nicer than the women in Canada, but uh, was too shy to say this. <laughs> Am I right or not, Patrick? I get stared at a lot more than in Canada, and I don't understand why so far. We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so right. I, uh, I'm Adrian Niculescu, serial entrepreneur and investor. My genius zones are marketing, sales, and business development, and I love to keep my hands dirty in these areas. Besides my advisory roles and board membership slots, I'm involved actively in few projects. Cloudcoin Consortium, Cloudcoin is a post-blockchain digital currency, Faster Capital, a Dubai-based accelerator and incubator for startups, Saga Global Ventures, which is a London-based venture capital firm, and also I'm involved in a Virgin Startups UK Richard Branson's program as a mentor. Happy to be here today. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Adrian. And um, I really thank you for joining last minute. <laughs> thank you. Uh, last but not least, Gary. Gary, thank you for joining. Yep. Hi, everybody. It's great to be here. Great to see Patrick, yourself, Sonny, and, and Adrian. So my name is Gary Fowler. I'm a serial entrepreneur and investor. I've done 17 startups. I've involved in um, uh, IPO, NASDAQ IPO, on the original management team of Click Software, an Israeli-based company brought over to the U.S. 
uh, sold to Salesforce 26 months ago for $1.35 billion, and also EVA.ai, uh, which is an AI HR tech company that I co-founded. Um, how long ago was it? Five, five, a little over five years ago, wow. almost to the day, actually. So uh, uh, that one was with Dr. David Yang, a billionaire uh, in Silicon Valley, a good friend of mine. We co-founded the company together. I'm the CEO, president, co-founder of GSD. Get Shit Done Venture Studios, premier AI and quantum venture studio located in Santa Clara, California. We peruse the world looking for incredible AI and quantum companies and use Silicon Valley support because the investors, the valuations are high. Investors are there from all over the world. And um, it's just a great place to develop partnerships and, and opportunities. So uh, also write a lot. My next article on quantum computing coming out in Forbes, maybe tomorrow. I've written 127 articles in a little over a year now. Wow, that's that's quite an achievement. Thank you, Gary. And we love to have you on all our panels. I think you should start investing into Bitcoin and crypto uh, projects as well. <laughs> I do. <laughs> okay, so we're going to talk about that in this, in this yeah. episode of the TV. Great, great. Good to know. Okay, let's start with some global trends in digital asset invest, uh, investing. So what are the digital, uh, sort of global trends in digital asset uh, investing? Uh, let's start with you, Adrian. Um, to, to start this, I would like to go back to your initial question, why institutional investors are, uh, are putting funds here. We are at the forefront of the mass adoption of this new asset class. And of course, we have really good established projects which could be seen as store of value, um, even if there is high volatility, but still the fundamentals are there. And also we have very uh, speculative, very, very speculating, uh, speculating things with very little fundamentals. Um, I'm, I'm calling these like meme projects. And oh. of course, I'm not, I'm not talking about Dodge. I'm talking about uh, Shiba Inu, uh, Kita Inu, or Husky. And I believe every dog breed will have its, its, its coins. And um, um, here, everybody has to be very, very cautious because uh, the potential can be very big, but also the rock pools can be uh, can be bigger. So there are so many established projects uh, bringing value and hopefully more usability, which could be seen as store of value. And uh, the returns, even from the established project, couldn't be overlooked by savvy investors who are looking for um, uh, good potential returns um, with, of course, a little bit of safety. And all the times there is a, a report between the safety of investment and uh, the, the return. Of course, the bigger the return, the bigger the risk, at least in theory. So we, we are seeing the going from birth to, to childhood, to potentially teenage uh, age of this new asset class. So um, it's one of the biggest trends uh, in, in our life, and we are fortunate to be part of it. Thank you so much uh, explaining uh, what's driving the institutional interest in cryptocurrencies. Thank you, Adrian. Next up, Patrick. Uh, yes. Um... Let's say, so like a Tesla kind of started a, a new trend where large company convert a, a little bit of a portion of their treasury, whatever excess cash that they have into Bitcoin or other crypto. To, to me, like a, like a Tesla, $1.5 billion worth of it, they, they have a lot uh, more cash in their bank account, essentially. So it's more, I would see more like an edge against the potential devaluation of USD. So they are trying to protect themselves and maybe give themselves a little bit of kind of growth potential. 
but uh, uh, it's still a drop in the uh, bucket. Sorry, the sorry to interrupt yes. you. Uh, have, we got a session? have we got a session open? I have only. Uh, I have only one session open, and I'm using my uh, this. So uh, I think it's it's okay now. Yeah, carry on. Is it better now? Yes. Yeah. It was fine. Oh. Uh, so yeah, it. I I think that they like a big company like this. Even if they converted uh, like a tiny part of their excess cash into Bitcoin. Even if Bitcoin shrink fifty percent tomorrow, they they can wait it out. They can wait three, four years because they don't need necessarily that money right away. So, for us, what we see a long, a better long term trend is that we design our own token with the, exactly that use case in mind, but we try to prevent uh, volatility, and we shield whichever company want to transition part of their cash flow and their excess cash into the crypto in cryptium that's uh, the token we built uh, and w like the, the goal is that those small business they think in terms of 12 to 18 months so if the price of the crypto crash 50 70 percent it's gonna really hurt them uh, they need to be able to pay their employee so but they do want the growth like if you put your bank your money in the bank account yeah and then uh, the us print 35 percent of the currency in one year, what's going to be an, an impact on your purchasing power next year? So we don't know. So I think this is the trend moving in the direction from uh, small and big company converting a part of their cash flow just to protect themselves in a sense. And I think we're going to see a lot more of that happening. Right, right. Yeah, I think nicely explained again, Patrick. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, next up, Gary. Yeah, sure, Sonny. So can you repeat the question so I can? So what 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 the global trends in digital asset investing? Yeah, I mean the situation um, right now is as we see the as we see. I mean, look at Ethereum actually as we speak. I was just looked a few minutes ago. It's up, uh, you know, eleven percent. And so what we're yeah. seeing is we're seeing these investors. It's gone from the outskirts, right? It's funny. I talked to. Um, Coram Shroff has got a million bitcoins, and um, and Coram and I've had uh, several conversations. And one of the things that it's in interesting, we've gone from you know people primarily looking at cryptocurrencies as uh, the tools of drug traders to people looking at cryptocurrencies really as we transform in this digital world. So as we and this happens by the way of all technology, Sunny, it's not yeah. like unique. When we did the, I started the first e-commerce consulting company, one of them, called the Broadian. And when I started that company, people said that people weren't going to be buying things online. I know now it's kind of strange, but it was really uh, normal then. Nobody's going to want to use their credit card. It's not going to happen. And then we started building Walmart. Uh, we started to build Delta, um, American Airlines websites, uh, among many others. But what happened is that was we talked about it being a thirty billion dollar cottage industry, and the big folks weren't in it. But all of a sudden they started to change, and it started to get adopted. And now look at it now, Amazon standard. At the time they were a bookseller. So what I'm seeing is that we've had to go the beginning of this pandemic. You know, through this digital transformation, people really, companies really opened up their eyes and understood that that uh, they had to make some changes. Then you see down in Miami. The mayor of Miami adopt Bitcoin and talk about Bitcoin and blockchain. And so now the situation is, as you start to see a bank start to uh, adopt it, start to invest in it, then you see Tesla. It's just it's becoming mainstream. It's just just the way it is. And, you know, um, I don't want to make any predictions on it. Although <laughs> the only thing is, it's, you know, I think there's it's. You know, we're just at the beginning. We're not at the end. At the same time, Sonny, we got to be really careful because when you start yeah. coming out with yeah. coins and they're being minted at this kind of rate, just like any kind of market, uh, including e-commerce, there are going to be people that win and lose. So make sure, you know, there was an Indiana Jones film many years ago with Harrison Ford and Sean Connery. Make sure you choose wisely. 
Oh, and so yeah, sure. You're going to see more. I mean, it's, you know, it's funny because literally across the street from where I am, we have a Bitcoin ATM in the gas station. So, you know, when that starts to happen, that you're talking about mass adoption, you're going to see it's like a tidal wave going to come through and you're going to start to three see specifically, you know, uh, Ethereum. Uh, and of course, Bitcoin, but you're going to see Ethereum, you're going to see these start to move out of the pack, right? And then you're going to see some of the other ones that haven't really had the right um, uh, stuff. You're going to see them shake out. You're going to see a couple of them come to the top. And it always happens in markets, right? It's like you cr as we cross, we're cr we've crossed the chasm now. Okay. So that's, thank you so much, Gary. So we have cryptocurrencies, we have Bitcoin, and then we have uh, DeFi, and we have NFTs as well. We're going to go uh, deep to those. Uh, but let's just start with some of the most popular. I think uh, recently um, Patrick has made an acquisition. Um, so what are some of the most popular and effective crypto investing strategy, what are the pros and cons? Um, so let's just start with that then. Then we can go a little uh, a bit into details on De DeFi and NFTs. So, Patrick, what are the, as for you, what are the most popular and effective crypto investing strategies, and what are the pros and pros and cons? Uh, so, okay, so maybe I can uh, like uh, go back to this, uh, like the, the token we designed uh, for the cash flow. So, our investment strategy is that we just didn't like the formula that is used by VC in Silicon Valley and has been promoted all over the world. So, because the problem with this is that you lose your money most of the time with your investment. And there's a there's a few winner in your portfolio that end up making you thousands of percent of return, like a more than 10x. And you make all your money with those few winners. Uh, and then all of those VC never like to invest in lifestyle business. You know, a, pro a profitable business that is doing just well, but they're never going to have a, a massive exit because they they scale, but slowly, and they, they don't have that massive uh, scalability. Those businesses are not bad. They, the economy needs them. They are more sustainable. So I wanted to design a token that would enable us to make money and strong return uh, with them. So that means that we could not rely on the equity alone. So this is why we design a token that essentially we do buy equity of the business for the upside in the long run. It's not liquid right away. It may take five, 10 years or more. It doesn't matter. Oh. We make money on the cash flow. So essentially the token itself has more business kind of convert part of their cash flow to it. The token is not just a like an imaginative value in the mind of people like Bitcoin or other tokens. It, there's a contractual obligation for those business to maintain a specific ratio of cryptium in their, in their cash flow. So as the company grew and their cash flow requirement increase, they have to buy more of cryptium from the market, which push the price up for everybody. So it doesn't really cost anything to anybody. It's just a kind of the demand for the currency improve. So you can make money on the currency itself. As opposed, if, you, if you're an investor and you mediate all your investment with USD, then you, your investment cannot influence the, the value of the currency. It, it will, but in such tiny fraction that you cannot leverage it. So that's why, like, and then you're, you're at the mercy of the market if uh, the US currency will improve and multiply by two in terms of value. It's very unlikely to, to happen. But back uh, in Canada 10 years ago, uh, there was a few companies that started ex exploiting petrol. And then the Canadian currency went from 70 cents to a dollar six and within three years as comparison to the US. So any companies or individual that had money in their bank account had an increase of purchasing power and it didn't cost anything to anybody. So this is that model we are kind of reproducing with the crypto. And it's liquid, which is interesting. And uh, we are on track to do about 230% return this year from it. And it's so not reliant only on the equity. Yeah. So we can invest in farm, we can invest in sustainable business, grocery store. 
we can improve their margins and we can make them more sustainable. Yes, yeah, sorry. Uh, thank you so much, Patrick, because I got so excited uh, about this uh, recent uh, acquisition. So basically, Patrick has bought a company in Singapore and he bought it with his own tokens. <laughs> exactly. And they are profitable business. So essentially, it benefits the entire community of Cryptium because now they they will actually grow the value of Cryptium too. And then Cryptium itself become not just speculative, but there's real business running that has nothing to do with crypto behind it too. Yeah. yeah and, this, and, this, and the employees are going to get paid in crypto. Wow. What, what company you. did you buy, Patrick? It, it's called Macchiato. It's a marketing agency. So essentially, mm -hmm. uh, they'll be helping us with market adoption at the same time. So it's always a strategic investment on top of it. And you bought them with crypto? Yeah, uh, the transaction is still ongoing. It's not finalized, but uh, uh, the head of the company, the CEO, she started uh, working with us on Monday. So it's uh, brand new. <laughs> no, that's great. Congratulations. That's great. Yeah, I think that's as more great. of those companies move in that direction, I think it, the, it will put non-speculative value for the entire market, which is great. So maybe can you explain what's the difference between fat uh, investing with 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 equity stakes and investing in crypto? For those who may not know that the value that crypto brings. Uh, was that the question for me again? Or yes, please. Else you can then, you can then. Okay. Right. So if you mediate it with uh, like a currency that is government back, then you have the stability. And see, hopefully, unless you're in Peru or Venezuela and you see a massive decline of your currency, that's the advantage of using a, a government backed currency. Uh, meanwhile, if you use crypto, like the danger is the volatility. But we designed uh, Cryptium uh, to prevent volatility with uh, two mechanisms. Uh, I don't think we should go into detail of how that works. Where, like, uh, you can go to our website and contact us to for the details but it's built to to make sure that you're shielded against that volatility so the day traders and the people who do those manipulation of price can still do it but the people who are stakers are unaffected from it so that makes it uh, a lot more safe than buying bitcoin to a certain extent bitcoin is still great for a large business but for a small one uh, i would maybe not recommend it as much because the thing, if the market crash next month and Bitcoin crash 30%, it's going to hurt those business significantly. If they don't have to, if they cannot wait uh, three, four years for it to go back, it's a, it's a danger. So, so overall, the, think... the advantage of using crypto is that uh, you don't have the, the currency exchange between multiple countries or team is spread all over the world. It's a lot easier to deal with that. They, they all converted back to to fiat in their own country and in the meantime the value of the the money in the past month has increased 240 percent i think so the employee that got paid early at the beginning of the last month they, they had a pretty massive uh, boost of purchasing power uh, it's not gonna always be that much because we are just starting uh, but that's the advantage wow that's a great advantage of uh, you know crypto investing uh, and purchasing companies like you know acquiring company thank you so much patrick so adrian so yeah so we have we've got a use case here and uh, we'd like to know from you what are some of the most popular effective crypto investing strategies i would like to to start by um, uh, reading from an email i received on the 19th of april and it said over the weekend the price of bitcoin crashed to 51.3k and led to one of the biggest liquidation events in crypto history according to the blog roughly 164,000 future liquidations occurred with 70 percent of these liquidations occurring on binance the whole idea is that in total 8.46 billion dollars in long liquidations occurred on april 17 alone so due to the um, volatility you need to have a strategy when investing which will um 
which will somehow work on uh, all weathers because even if you let's say if you are doing also some uh, trading if you are doing options futures you can have all the technical things in place and one morning elon musk puts a tweet with uh, <laughs> uh, him with a bitcoin t-shirt and everything <laughs> everything is is changed so and we are living in such a world when a tweet from an influencer can move the market like crazy and you need to add that to your strategy and and um, the people who are doing this let's say for 20 years they say no this is not possible this is this is not an effective strategy to take into consideration we are doing things the way we know from the stock market and look at what happens in one day a lot of liquidations so um there are different strategies one of them working very well is what i'm calling the asset strategy so basically you put money in the underlying assets and you do arbitrage or you are taking profits yeah. reinvest in other things but don't use leverage and of course uh, in other strategies you can put uh, smaller amounts in high leveraged high risk positions but not to affect the whole portfolio because um, even here with crypto works uh, warren buffett's basic rule never to lose the capital because if you are losing the capital it's very hard to to um uh, to, to get back and what patrick said about investments in the venture capital world that most of the investors are losing their money but we are in such a tiny world that we only see the ipos we only see the huge successes and somehow uh, it seems that like the fake the big failures and bankruptcies and and the massive losing of funds, uh, they don't exist because all the information is around those massive successes. So all the time you need to, to make the effort and to, to start learning and to do somehow your own due diligence because at the end of the day, um, it's your mm -hmm. money. Even if you are playing with investors' money, um, they are looking for a return on investment they are not looking at uh, to to receive an email from you saying that sorry the funds uh, disappeared so it's it's a huge effort all the time to 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 focus on the, i don't know five to ten percent of the um, investment strategies ideas which will keep you in the market and will be able to to, to multiply the funds and to give a return on investment. So um, um, this is what I'm seeing. If you want to play very, very high risk, play with portions of the assets. So if something bad happens, you will uh, you will not lose any uh, everything. Yeah. At small level, medium level, and even at, at, at a big level can be applied. Okay, we've got Peter as well, who's joined us now. Hi, Peter. Hello, everyone. Hi, Peter. I think it's quite early for you there. That's why you were... A little bit, late. yes. Yes. My apologies. So, no, 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 no. Which country are you dialing from? I'm in New York, in, in the US. Okay, and what time is it? It is 7.30 a.m. All right, all right. But anyways, thank you for joining us. We are halfway through, but still, thank you for joining us. Can you have a quick round of intro about yourself, Peter? Sure. Um, my name is Peter Lyons. I am with Two Prime Digital Assets. Uh, Two Prime is a hedge fund, um, a very traditional hedge fund in many ways, um, except that we buy Bitcoin and Ethereum, and then we use the burgeoning uh, options and derivatives uh, markets to hedge those uh, positions. So you can actually buy puts, sell calls on Bitcoin and Ethereum, 
There's a variety of different uh, derivatives exchanges. Uh, but basically, our view is that when it comes to digital assets, institutional investors really need some risk management uh, best practices. Um, I think, you know, as the previous uh, speaker noted, it's not about gambling. It's not about um, speculation. It's really about trying to get consistently good returns while also managing downside volatility. And I think uh, particularly for Bitcoin and Ethereum, there are derivatives markets to do that. Um, and in our experience, it's 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 a it's a very new space. I mean, the, these options and, and futures on Bitcoin and Ethereum have only existed for really only the past year. But the uh, the strategy is really working, and and uh, right now we have about a hundred million under management. Um, as the derivatives markets grow, so does the uh, space for our fund to grow. I think you might be muted, Sunny. Yes, sorry. <laughs> yes, thanks for reminding. I was on mute. Uh, yeah, you've done the right panel, Peter, and welcome to VCTV. Is it your first time on VCTV or you've been? Oh, no, I, I've, uh, I've, I've been, uh, I think, twice before. Twice before, okay, cool. Welcome to VCTV Asia. This is uh, where I host at this time, early morning for you. And uh, I hope to see you more on, on this time zone as well. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Uh, Gary, over to you with the same question. If you don't remember my question, so what are some of the most uh, popular and effective crypto investing strategy? What are the pros, pros and cons? You've spoken about pros and what are the cons as well? Let's just hear it from you. Certainly. Can I just, you know, Peter, can I just ask Peter one question before we get started? Um, it's it's interesting for me. I had I was with a couple of high net worth, extremely high net worth individuals yesterday. These things. What's the adoption? Are people open to the uh, futures, the puts, and and options trading with the crypto? I mean, is that something from your standpoint? Is it uh, because we had this discussion yesterday uh, d directly about that? Is it is it? Are they accepting it or no? It. What's the feeling about it right now? Well, I think it really comes down to execution, right? I mean, you know, from our perspective, you know, we're coming from a traditional equities volatility, um, you know, hedging uh, market where, you know, there's obviously a lot more volatility in um, crypto than in traditional equities, but a lot of the same principles are applied. I think what's different is is how we look at you know when when are when are we applying the puts and uh you know how are we sort of adjusting the strategy based on like the price action and then you're also looking at the on-chain data so you know it's a mix of sort of new and old ways of uh looking at volatility and looking at the market but i, th I think that institutional investors want exposure to digital assets i think what's uh interesting is that you know, I think many are familiar with the Bitcoin play. I think less are as familiar with uh, Ethereum, but what we're seeing uh, happen with Ethereum now is uh, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of interest, a lot of uh, Ethereum coming off the exchanges, going into um, uh, private wallets. We're seeing the volumes really start to reflect a institutional appetite. So I would say institutions are are interested, Gary, to answer your, to answer your question. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I was on this call with uh, Kurum Shroff. Uh, he's got a, about a million Bitcoins. I don't know. Yeah. About who, and um, we had some discussions about Ethereum. And, you know, it's just for me, it's it's just it's fascinating. I, obviously, I'm an, an investor, but something I mean, Ethereum's up 14 percent uh, right now. It's just insane. I mean, it's it's incredible. And so I'm just, you know, to, it, now as we start to move mainstream with it, you're going to see all these financial tools start to come to play and we're going to be treating it. I mean, it's not just a, a transaction. This is really, uh, you know, it's like, um, um, you know, trading currencies. It's, it's insane. It's one side's investment, <laughs> and people, but on the other side is to be traded and people don't want to trade it because they're afraid of losing money. Yeah. <laughs> so, 
I've never seen anything like it in my life. You know what I mean? It's, it's exciting. Like, I don't want to try, you know, and the thing is, it's like, okay, I want to do Bitcoin and I want to do transactions of Bitcoin, but I, I'm afraid to do it because I might lose money because <laughs> it's going to be up at that 5% by the end of the day. You know what I mean? It's like such yeah. a weird situation. It's incredible. So, no, I, I, I see it too. And it's just as I start to see this become uh, mainstream and then having conversation, I just interviewed the mayor of Miami Beach recently and uh, had some discussions with the mayor's office in Miami. And, you know, as you start to see this being adopted, it's changing so quickly. It's like a tsunami coming in in a positive way. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, cities now are looking to... Uh um, allocate some of the, uh, you know, the the city treasury into, uh, you know, Bitcoin, and I think increasingly Ethereum as well. And you know, those are those are the types of institutional investors that we want to work with. Um, we think it's not simply about going to grayscale, putting a bunch of money in, and hoping that it keeps going up. You know, you have to really be responsible and manage the risk i mean this is people's livelihoods and 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 you know it's really about making sure that you're managing the client's money in a responsible way and yeah it's uh, seven days a week a job sonny i just want to say one other thing i just want just uh, very interesting i'm glad peter's on today and uh i'd rather talk to him than myself right now because i'm curious about but Peter, one other thing is, you know, I had somebody say this again, another super high net worth individual here in Palm Beach. And, um, you know, we, he was saying that, um, you know, I don't have a choice but to get into cryptocurrencies because if I don't, <laughs> I'm going to fall so far behind. I mean, it's and I was like, I've never heard anybody at that kind of level talk about falling behind in terms of, uh, you know, compared to the peers, right? Because the peers are invested in Bitcoin. And one of them invested at 10,000 and now it's what, 55, right? And so, I mean, literally, I've never heard any, this guy was really FOMO. nervous. Yeah. What's that? The FOMO, the fear yeah. of missing out. Yeah. Yeah. FOMO. <laughs> and the thing is, you know, that fear is driving some of the prices up. But at the same time, when you get Ethereum and some of the, you know, as we go through this digital transformation, and you know, start to look at this entirely different way of transactions. It's redefining the entire financial structure, right? Globally. Yeah. And it's just, it's just, it's fascinating for me, for me, because I'm hearing it. You know, I'm hearing it one side with uh, Shahal and Quorum, and then the other side, I'm hearing it from you know folks in government. It's 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 happening too quickly. And the come and the places that don't get into it are going to be out, right? It's going to be really interesting society where you've got countries that have bought into it that are transaction and optimizing the opportunities and people that have it that uh, are going to be on the outside looking in they're going to be outside of the global market for my opinion anyhow there's one strategy uh, that oh, go ahead peter sorry patrick please no i was gonna say that there's one strategy that we haven't approached at the moment but uh, the idea of yield farming and liquidity pools. Like if, when you're sitting on at least two different tokens that you can inject into some decentralized exchange, like uh, right now, the same way, some of the pools we created on one inch, for example, we're in control and it's earning us like 5% uh, a day of transaction fee. Mm. So it, yeah. you just have to find the right pool and you may have to move your money around to optimize. But that's what yield farming is all about. So when yeah. you're sitting on a lot of token, you don't have to just keep them in your vault. You can put some of yeah. them to work too. Uh, there are some good opportunity there. The, the danger in this case is the impermanent loss. What's so staking? Patrick staking. Yes. Uh, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So it's it's uh, honestly the that all DeFi industry uh, has opened the doors quite a bit. Uh, to, to put so your crypto to work. On <laughs> yeah, it's all about passive income. <laughs> you know, yes. one of our approaches is, uh, um, you know, with all the Bitcoin and Ethereum, we have, you know, the 100 million or so, um, we take about half of that and actually lend it out to other uh, yeah. large 
um, hedge funds with uh, very strong balance sheets. Um, and we're earning, you know, between five and 8% uh, annual yield on that Bitcoin that is lent out in Bitcoin and repaid in Bitcoin. So, you know, I think there's going to be some compression there uh, in the in the yields on, on the crypto, but that's Bitcoin. I mean, I'm sure that other you know, other coins could potentially yield uh, higher. So, you know, we're, we're all about that. And as well as the, uh, the spot futures trade, the contango as well. You know, using futures, you can actually lock in for Bitcoin and Ethereum some yields, um, you know, ver with very low risk simply by uh, playing on the spot in the futures. Interesting. Very well, that's interesting. A, yeah, that's a, yeah, that's amazing, actually. And Peter, so if somebody, you know, just um, if somebody's looking at, at Bitcoin two months from now, how in the world can you forecast? Right, where it's going to be. How do you sell those uh, options? Yeah, that has to work, right? I mean, right, Sonny? I mean, it's incredible yeah. how the, it's working. How in the world can you even stake it? I mean, it's because it's not, the trajectory is not even. It's not like it's a linear trajectory. Trajectory, how do you do it? So we look at the stock to flow primarily. Um, and then we're looking, uh, well, if we look at the stock to flow, um, you know, what we see is, you know, 18 months after the last halving uh, in Bitcoin in particular, we see the typical price peak and we look at 2012 and 2016. Now, you know, it's not exactly the same, I think every cycle, but I think that's a rough guide. And you know what that sort of points to, you know, what we, what we expect is somewhere between 150 to 250, you know, sometime by the end of the year. Now, um, with Ethereum, I think the potential for upside is higher. Um, and there's not really a sort of like playbook, a stock to flow playbook. Well, you know, there is like, um, you know, when it comes to Ethereum, there is a certain like finite amount of Ethereum that can be, uh, minted. But I think with Ethereum, the upside is potentially higher. Um, but yeah, it's really sort of impossible to know. I think it's difficult to time these things. And I think people that are looking at this for the long term should be in it for the long term. People that yeah. are trying to, you know, get in and, you know, get out and within a few months. <laughs> that's that's a very risky proposition. Risky. Yeah. I mean, my daughter, my daughter is uh, uh, day trades um, crypto oh. and Robin. And she's a millennial. And there's a lot of millennials doing those kind of things today. And, oh. and, uh, and they're doing okay with it, by the way. Yeah, I hope uh, I mean, you know something like 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 Dogecoin. You know, if you look at you know some of the momentum behind some of these trades, Dogecoin has had this incredible run up. But we wouldn't touch Dogecoin with a twenty foot pole. And <laughs> you know why? Well, Dogecoin doesn't actually have any developers. There, there's no but there's no core development team. There's nobody actually like sort of, you know, running or, 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 you know, there to like take care of things. If there's any bugs, it's purely, um, speculation. And I think when Dogecoin and others like it, you know, inevitably crash and burn, I think a lot of people on Robin hood, for example, are going to have a lot of sleepless nights. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's don't you think it'll affect every all the other bit uh, coins? All the other Absolutely. What's you're going to end up with the regulators and and legislators saying, "What's this Dodge, Doge coin, Dog coin?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, exactly. You know, exactly. it's. I agree with you 100. percent I mean, that happens, right? It's a Dutch tulip phenomenon. Yeah. And yeah. They're going to come in and they're going to start hammering it when they shouldn't be. So, yeah, it's interesting. Really interesting, and I was wondering about and how do how does somebody go down through and look through all the coins to figure out which one are the ones to really buy into or not because there's so much speculation out there, right? Um, so there are resources that look at, for example, like uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar with uh, GitHub, but it's where a lot of the open source 
yeah. world sort of like puts their, you know, their work and you can look, you know, by project, for example, and see like, okay, how many, you know, how many active monthly developers are associated with, you know, Ethereum, you know, Ethereum is by far, you know, the largest uh, developer community. If you look at Dogecoin, it's like, there's no active monthly developers, right? You look at Bitcoin, you have a reasonable amount, you know, you can compare these projects by looking at, you know, what's the sort of intellectual um, capital kind of backing these things. Right. And I think that's first and foremost, that that gives you a sense of where these things are. Are they serious? Are there actually like, is there brain power behind it? Yeah. Um, and all of that stuff is freely available. You can, you know, there's different resources for um, getting that information. Uh, to me, that's my biggest fear also. Uh, if you guys remember like in what, 97, uh, 98, with the dot com uh, bubble, like traders would be afraid to go to lunch because they would lose so much money just not being there to trade yeah. on all the IPO that were coming out. And some of those IPO were just complete nonsense. There were some, I remember one company that their entire business model was to sell toilet paper online, which made like zero sense at that point in time. But now that, that's what the thing that does. I don't know you're laughing, Sonny. <laughs> they were 20 years too early. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, now it makes sense. Yeah. But back then, no. <laughs> and I think all the Doge and the Safe Moon and all those tokens that have, they are not solving any problems. They, they are just, uh, anybody who throw money right now on the market will get those tokens that uh, grew like a, 10,000, 50,000 percent. They, even if the other, they lose money, they, they, you, ju you just spread 50 bucks on like thousands of projects. The one that will grow will grow so much that, that you'll be recovering all your loss. The thing, the, the entire market will have to cool down. And that, to me, that's the biggest fear is that with all those tokens growing so fast right now, I really fear that uh, not only the reg regulator will come in, but when people start to lose money, the the entire market will crash pretty badly because of mm -hmm. those that uh, okay. all those projects make no sense. So, I remember Patrick in March two thousand because I did an IPO in June, right? The market crashed in March. We were riding it up through uh, Click Software, and I remember we did the IPO in June. I remember what happened. It was like for the next year after that was like um, it was like Death Valley on Silicon Valley. People were disappearing. It was unbelievable um, attitude, but it came back. It was one of the cycles they went through. But the stuff you write, there was so much <laughs> pets.com and the stock puppets and everything else. Although now web van, some of those technologies, <laughs> toilet paper, some of those things that are out there would be interesting today. They just were ahead of their time. And they were, you know, they were the Dutch tulip, uh, you know, it was a Dutch tulip phenomenon. But they were just way too overvalued. Like uh, back then, the market was so small; it didn't make sense that they were worth more than a company like uh, Rockwell Collins, that even was a Fortune 500 with 50,000 employees. It didn't make sense. The evaluation was just out of whack. Yeah, and I mean that's the big fear right now, right? The big fear is that you know, unfortunately, there's so much hype that people are buying into all these coins, like you said, like Peter said, that may not have the back up the developers to really you know back up what the price of the coin is so you got to be so what you want to do is you want to look at the fundamentals it always goes back to fundamentals right and so look at the fundamentals of what you're investing in and don't get carried up in the hype because if you do that's where you get slammed nothing good will happen so what is she doing your daughter on robin hood what is she trading she's trading uh ethereum and she's trading bitcoin that's what she's doing I mean, she's wow. doing, you know, she does it for fun. She's, she, and she's not the only millennial. These millennials are really jumping into stuff. They're, they're like a big pack of, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> piranhas out there. They're going after, you know, stuff and they, they're smart, right? They go out together. Yeah. They go on Reddit and all kinds of places and get data. Yeah. And, you know, that's very easy for them. She grew up in a different world. And, you know, so they're, and they work together on things. It's amazing, actually. And the thing is, some of those micro cap 
once you start getting uh, influencers on board, yeah, it, it, people, that's why they, they make those channels on TikTok, on Instagram, on whatever, yeah. and then they push the token afterward. And so they, they can actually influence the market because the, those micro caps are so small that they, uh, it's like another game, game stop. Uh, There's a lot of pump and dump. Yeah. 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 And they keep recycling and they, they keep moving their money and it works well, for them. Mean, but, yeah. with the, but if you get the fluctuations like you have in these cryptocurrencies, even the good ones, right? I'm looking at Ethereum's up 13, and I believe in Ethereum too, but it's up 13.34% just today. That's a lot, right? In 24 hours. So it's, uh, yeah, it's interesting. It's incredible. And, <laughs> And Patrick, I, I feel I was there. I was in Silicon Valley doing an e-commerce startup and I did an IPO. I was right there when all this stuff was going on. And I remember people did not want to leave their office. I remember people going into stores for Christmas and buying out the Mont Blanc pens because it was they had so much money. It was unbelievable. It was good so, times. Yeah, no, it's interesting. So, sorry about it, Sonny. It's just, and the toilet paper thing got me too. That I, 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 <laughs> I know. We had discussions about toilet paper, you know. <laughs> we should do a toilet paper thing, right? <laughs> Selling toilet papers online? <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thank you. It's become a very okay, go, Patrick, carry on. No, I was making another joke that I heard of another token called uh, Feed Your Gorilla. <laughs> so it, now they, they, it, it, the token is called that feed your gorilla they, they don't even try to make legit project anymore they they make just memes and jokes and somehow they they, they explode <laughs> just because of yeah. uh yeah all the the people who are have that fear of missing out what if it grew up ten thousand percent i'll put just 50 bucks and then it, it's a self-fulfilling prophecy that well, the NFTs are the logical extension. I mean, talk about mimetics, mm -hmm. right? I mean, this is basically people just, you know, creating something and sort of engineering this FOMO. And, you know, next thing you know, somebody's paid $60 million for, you know, mm -hmm. something that's, you know, accessible to anyone online. I mean, I think nfts no. to me they sort of like that's that's the the foam that's the frothiness mm -hmm. right that's that's not something i think that is like a positive indicator of where things are um but eventually maybe these nfts become something like uh securities or some kind of you know royalty uh paying products for for musicians but that's a very different proposition and that's going to involve you know securities regulators you know, but NFTs as they are now, I think, are just um, they they represent some uh, um, real frothiness, I think, in the uh, in the space. Right, but there's a lot of noise around NFTs. I don't want to. I wanted to discuss. I wanted to discuss on this uh, panel, but I think we are running short of time. Uh, Peter, you joined us late, so next time I would really appreciate if you can join me, <laughs> join me on time, especially on this topic because we're going to cover DeFi, we're going to cover NFTs as well. A lot of people oh, yeah. are asking, asking me about NFTs, how to work, and why should they invest, and what is the return on investment? That's that's the way. That's the question I'm stuck at. What's the return on investment on an NFT? <laughs> well, it's like. Uh... You know, I think for, for many people, it's just sort of bragging rights or it's some kind of like, you know, hey, you know, this is, I, I have this great, uh, you know, piece of art hanging in my house, except I just want yeah. everyone in the world to know that I have this artwork hanging in my house, you know, and then uh, there's some kind of like validation for that. You know, I, I think it's a very subjective and very, I think most the vast majority of people on NFT are just going to lose whatever money they put in, including the, the creators, right? They're going to spend the gas fees. They're going to put some something up there. They're going to sit and wait for somebody to bid on it. And, you know, I think the way this is set, the way this works is it's only really ever going to accrue to a very small minority of people. 
Yeah. We have a $65 million uh, NFT in my USB key. It's great. <laughs> Just don't lose it. <laughs> no, I, have, I don't buy that stuff. But. Well, uh, Peter nicely explained, I have art in my uh, wall, art hanging in my wall. I want to NFT it and make it digital and available to everybody. <laughs> but it, yeah, but it's like, it's almost like the value of it is really like an, in in sort of others kind of like knowing that you have it right and and it's not even necessarily like you personally but it's it's it's, it's it feels like high school it feels like some kind of popularity contest you know it's very basic human psychology and fomo psychology and yeah. you know meme psychology but it, it seems like it's not something I, I, I personally or professionally would would try to get involved in. Maybe because I just don't understand it the way, you know, the experts in the space do. Same here. I'm trying to. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Peter, for joining us. Adrian, thank you again for joining us. And obviously, you know, uh, this is this is the ecosystem community that we would like to build at VCTV, where people bring in their expertise. Patrick in bought a company in Hawkins. Wow, that's amazing. Uh, Peter, it's all about trading, options, stocks, NFTs, DeFi. So I'm going to hear more from you in the coming sessions as well. And Adrian, as well, we couldn't hear much from you. But nevertheless, we are running the show every day. I'm going to cover more and more crypto-related topics in coming weeks. Uh, so please stay tuned. And uh, let's take some quick closing remarks from each of you, and we wrap up the show. Patrick, your closing remarks, please. Uh, invest wisely. Uh, look at uh, tokens or crypto technology that solve real problems. Look at alternative way to make uh, uh, to to earn passive income with your existing token, uh, like Bitcoin, things like that. They are still uh, worth uh, having in your portfolio. Try to diversify. Uh, we published a blog post about diversification. Uh, it, it's all about correlation. Most of the market is correlated, but there's a few tokens that are not. So it's it's worth taking a look into that for diversification. Not don't rely on just one thing. Thank you. Always invest wisely. Thank you so much, Patrick. Uh, Peter. Um, I think the space is 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 really interesting. It's growing. It's attracting some of the. Uh, the big institutional players, I would say, for those that want to learn more about how institutions are getting involved, um, you know, we are always happy to to share the data, to talk to people. Um, just follow us on on LinkedIn at Two Prime Digital Assets, or our website Two Prime .io, and we'll be happy to share what we know. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. Adrian. Um, I always bet on diversification, but in the same time, uh, diversification can be a bad thing if it's done by the sake of uh, being done. Also, specialization is very good. Try to learn as much possible about a certain category of assets to be better than 90% in the market. And from time to time, take the profits and reinvest in uh, in another uh, asset classes like stocks or real estate or other things so it's a combination between diversification and uh, specialization which will create a portfolio for any type of weather because at the end of the day i believe this is the most important aspect for the people who are here on long term um, I can be found on LinkedIn. I answer to all messages there. Thank you very much for having me here in the VCTV family, as usual, the Asia one. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you, Adrian, for joining uh, back on uh, VCTV Asia. Last but not least, Gary, what's your closing remarks? No. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's, you know, this is, uh, you know, what we have is an exciting opportunity in the, the digital transformation of the planet. And it's really exciting. So 
breaking down borders, being able to do transactions we've never been able to do before, smart contracts, blockchain, crypto, all kind of exciting, incredible technologies. We have to be careful. We need to look at cybersecurity. Cybersecurity is going to be incredibly important in a decentralized way with um, companies like uh, Splitbyte out there that can really help solve some of these issues. At the same time, look at the fundamentals. And some things never change. Look at the fundamentals of the company. Don't get into the Dutch tulip phenomenon and just invest because you're into the hype. Look at what the company does. You know, as Peter said, look at the uh, developers that are behind it. Make sure that there's the right stuff behind it that the company's going to be around. And if you do those kind of things, you maximize. Uh, I do diversify too across, you know, invest in all kinds of different areas. That's really important. Not to put all your eggs in one basket. You got to be careful about that. So it's an exciting opportunity. Um, it's a, a great time to invest. It's a great time to see how the plan is changing. And, um, you know, the pandemic's done a lot of not good things over the last year. But one of the things it did do is help us all come together in a digitally transformed way to make the world a little bit better place. So you can reach me, Gary Fowler, on LinkedIn, Twitter. I actually have a show today talking about health tech. Um, got a lot of a lot of uh, good stuff on quantum and AI. So tune in, and it's great to see our VCTV family. And Patrick, thanks for talking about the toilet paper thing because it just was a beautiful day today. Because <laughs> Sonny and I joke about it. you know we have quantum computers, but we couldn't get a roll of toilet paper nine months ago. And now it's funny, but it wasn't funny then. <laughs> of course not. Oh my god, it wasn't funny at all. It was all over yeah. media everywhere. <laughs> it was exactly. Everywhere. You know, if we would have had the toilet paper, we'd have made a fortune. <laughs> exactly. Oh my God. Thank you so much, Gary, Patrick, Peter, Adrian, for joining the session. And I'm going to be back again tomorrow on another episode of VCTV. Till then, keep watching VCTV. Stay safe, and I'm going to see you again. Take care. Bye bye. Thank you, Sunny. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. bye, -bye.